This is where I used to work in Bishopdale. I bought a farmhouse on the thousand foot contour and you look down into Bishopdale. This is Bishopdale back and these are the walls, steep sided walls going down. Curlews, curlews passing my window. Marvellous interaction of movements. Bishopdale. This is a painting of something that happened to me at Malham. It began to rain and I sheltered under a rock, an overhanging rock. And a wire came down from the rock and there was a big raindrop hanging on the wire, glistening like a jewel. And that was the centre of the universe and that was special and unexpected. And all these other things came off it. Oh, what a moment. What a moment. This is just a moment when there's a wire fence, when there's this, and there's floating, and there's this. And there's just a moment, and then there's a figure. Strange figure. One-legged figure. A figure balancing on one leg on top of the forehead of the, this creature. The limestone landscape is full of incredible shapes. The clints and the gripes where the limestone is worn away. So you get, you're, you're living in a landscape where things are worn away and little clues are wedged in the cracks and the premises. And that's what happens in this, in this painting. Up on the moors, another meeting on the moor. Some events are so marvellous and unusual and special and should be celebrated. Reaver Cross is a big carved cross set into a dry stone wall on Rumble's Way, which is the Pacos route across the Pennines. And I used to go there every Wednesday, every Wednesday morning at 11 o'clock, and always something was happening there. There was the day of the Red Bull, the day of the snowstorm, the day of the multiple rainbows. From a distance I had seen two shapes circling around the cross and realised there were two short-eared owls doing their mating display round each other, round each other. And I thought, oh, never see that again. What an event. What a marvellous event. And I thought the best thing to do to remember it is to mime it with my hands, to, to play it out, to, to mime it like Lindsay Kemp might do. And that these owls would be circling round each other, the male underneath the female, circling round underneath, almost, almost touching, almost touching. And I'd never see that again. Go up there, Wednesday after Wednesday after Wednesday, and I doubt if I will see it as I did that particular day. So that's what it is. The owl, the nest, the egg, the bird, the entrance, suggestions, the bracken, another shape, another shape balancing just about to fall over. The two shapes of the birds, the sun, the moon, the planet, death, the threat, whatever this is. This is the theme of River Cross, which is built into the wall. I've isolated it now, but it's a cross. And I've suggested a figure on it, in that position, which is a, a strong traditional image of a figure on a cross. It's not uh, religious, it's just the idea of a figure at the mercy of the elements. I am at the mercy of what happens. Above it I've got spheres and these are suggesting an eclipse. 
and I'm imagining it's a special time when there is an eclipse. If you were a magician or a shaman and you could foretell that there was an ellipse coming, if you could say, tomorrow I will darken the moon, or tomorrow I will take away the sun, what power that would give you over the tribe or group of people you were with to give you flour to make you bread. So there's something of that in it. There's something of bracken in it. There's something of a man hiding in the bracken. There's something of the green man. The green man is an image which we see in churches and it is a man looking out through vegetation. It is a man with vegetation growing out of his mouth and growing out of his ears. And this must have been a key image for these small tribes in prehistoric times. Seeing a man in the undergrowth, a friend or a foe. Is it another, is it a foe who will steal my women and steal my crops and steal my goods? Is it a threat or is it a friend? Do I recognise it? Is it someone who will help me through a bad day? These sort of, you know, a face looking at you. This is part of the image. I talk to myself as I'm doing now. I'm talking to you as I'm doing now. <laughs> hoping to draw you into my experiences which resulted in the paintings. And I do paintings because I see things. It's as simple as that. Uh, Has any of, any of this taken you by surprise, seeing it in the gallery? Oh uh, yes, because it's such a good gallery. Because it's so varied in the scale and distance you can see things. There is a big circular painting here which is very good from a distance. But on the other hand, it's hung in a very nice position, so you can go up to it and touch it. You can feel the texture of it, the grooves in it, and this is, this is part of it. I think paintings should be touched. I think you should look at them, and I think you should talk about them, and you should dream about them, and tell yourself stories. And there's no right answer. My answer isn't any better than yours. Your answer maybe based on a lot stronger feeling for what you're looking at than, uh, than anyone's.